You're listening to BBC Radio Cumbria on AM, FM and online. I'm here till six and I hope you can spend some time with me and people I like to call our friends. A quick look now at what's coming along in the next couple of hours. Well, last year, in the summer of 2007, actually, I chatted with Debbie Curtis, who had decided to revive her father Eddie's radio big band, taking a bit of a gamble, well, a huge gamble, actually, by hiring the London Palladium for a one-off concert. I'll be catching up with Debbie after five o'clock today. It's the Debbie Curtis Radio Big Band and Tuxedo Junction. Anne Hopper on BBC Radio Cumbria. BBC Radio Cumbria. played by the Debbie Curtis Radio Big Band and some great supporters there, obviously. Now, if you were with me around 18 months ago, you may have heard my first chat with Debbie as she was trying to revive the sound of big band music which packed them in at the London Palladium on Sunday nights long, long ago. Well, those were the days when the theatre took a break from whichever show it was playing at the time and returned its stage and auditorium into a riotous three and sometimes four-hour long night of jazz and swing played by the top bands of the time. But inevitably, musical tastes changed and the big band sound fell out of favour, except for some die-hard enthusiasts like Debbie's father, Eddie Curtis, and the audiences who continued to follow the big bands wherever they could find them. Well, that first Sunday night at the London Palladium, which Debbie organised back in the summer of 2007, was a huge success, and many other concerts have followed. But with musical tastes very different now from what they were in the heyday of the big band in the 30s and 40s, could that sound really make a spectacular comeback? Well, catching up with Debbie earlier this week brought a very positive response to that question. Obviously, big bands will only come back if the public demands... Um, and they are, so we're back, hello. <laughs> um, but basically, yes, we've done really well. We've had, um, we've got a tour starting um, in January that goes right through to June. And it's obviously getting, or hopefully it appears to be getting to a younger audience as well, and keeping the original audience. Can you just remind us how you came to take on the Radio Big Band after your father, Eddie, died? When he, when he died, I, I saw his gigs out. And then I took it off the road for a while, revamped it, um, did the stands with my name on because everyone was calling me Eddie. <laughs> and still do, actually. That's quite funny. Um, and once I sort of revamped it, so I put some, a couple of other musicians in. Um, I've got like Mark White, Martin Shaw on trumpets, who are fantastic, absolutely fantastic players. Um, had a sort of bit of a sort of spring clean as the band, I suppose. And started putting in some of our own arrangements and then literally booked a few theatres and it took off from there really. How many musicians in the lineup now then, Debbie? Um, sixteen. Sixteen. Sixteen children, yep. <laughs> now, I'm glad you said that because I read the review, um, Jim Kennedy's review of this summer's uh, Palladium concert and <laughs> he said that you were you were marshalling them like a mother <laughs> hen and even chastising one of the musicians. <laughs> I hadn't got it quite right in your view. I mean, is that something you do all the time? I, um, really, it was sort of band leaders were considered um, generals in tuxedos, and I think I've taken that on. <laughs> <laughs> but you're now considered the world's only female swing band leader, is that still right? Yes, yes, I, I think there are other um, female band leaders as such. Um, I'm not sure they're quite doing what I'm doing, which is, um, you know, basically throwing the entire of my life into determined to get big bands and swing music out there to everybody, to a really wide audience. Mm. Now, the music you're playing, obviously, is, is the traditional kind that we expect from big bands from, from way, way back at, up until the 50s and Ted Heath, who I know uh, you are a great fan of. Do you use any kind of modern music at all and bring that um, into the, the big band swing sound? I've been using some Gordon Goodwin arrangements. Um, I don't know if anybody's heard of him. He's, he's fantastic. He's absolutely brilliant arranger. Um, which is great, very sort of rhythmic, um, still has the pitting of the reed sections to an extent. And I'm using a couple of our own, I've just revamped 2001, 
and I'm working on Charles Wright Watts 103rd Street Rhythm Band Express Yourself mm. um, as well as still um, sticking with a load of other things Stan Kenton, Hefty, Ellington, Basie I love the Basie arrangement um, I really do you know I still think Little Darling is one of my favourites This arrangement of Little Darlin, played by the Debbie Curtis Radio Big Band. Neil Hefty being just one arranger of the band's current program. Debbie also likes to use arrangements by Fletcher Henderson and Kick Webb. So this now is, if you like it, a full-time job for you. I know when we spoke last time, it wasn't quite. You were still doing other things. But now it sounds as though it is your entire focus. Yes, it is. It's um, 24-7. Mm-hmm. In fact, there aren't enough hours in the day to get it around the world like I need to. <laughs> and are you able to keep the same group of musicians together in between each concert, or, or are those rather expensive days gone forever? Um, I have kept the same musicians together, um, which is really, really good. And that was one of the things I, I was really adamant at from the start, was I wanted to keep the same band, um, mainly so that I could not only play music that's been played before as well as I could, but I could also move forward having that, knowing those individual player styles and be able to write music, you know, really well for them. I still use pen and ink, I think I said before. Mm-hmm. Um, I use the platinum core music kind of pen um, rather than just computerised, you know, printouts. Though I have got an audience to pay this, I still write by hand. Now, how have the audiences reacted to the concerts you've been giving in the past year? Presumably not quite the same for each concert, but in general terms, has your music been received as something new and exciting? Yes, really, really good. Um, so you, so obviously younger people, they haven't seen big bands before. And um, we've got a very wide um, sort of university crowd who come in and they're quite noisy, which is great because it livens everything up as well. I remember when we spoke last time, you were saying that um, you were not quite sure how to to actually approach the Palladium concert, the first one you did, because yeah. the, the dancing in the aisles was now frowned upon, whereas yeah. in the days of Ted Heath, of course, people were quite expected to get up and, and, and jive and do whatever. Yeah. Um, but I gather they did. Yep, they still did. And um, this time, there was no stopping them. I didn't actually get blamed, which was really good. And we did. we had a standing ovation in there, which was excellent. Um, but I think audiences, even with health and safety, sometimes it's best to just get on with the show and hope for the best, really, because you've done it then. So you you are 12 months and more on, you are putting the big back in yep. big band music. Yep. Now, how are you going to keep this up? How are you going to continue the momentum that you've gathered? We've got a DVD out now, available from uk, pushing, um, obviously, the putting the big back in band tour, and we've got a fan base of about 140,000, which is really, really good. Um, and obviously that's where the internet has helped with things like YouTube, MySpace, Facebook. So we've, we've got a sort of set of people who are constantly pushing that as well, which is great because we are we have actually got quite a nice, it's just nice to say we've got a fan club playing swing music, you know. It's, of course. It's just turning it round, which is excellent. Debbie's website is really worth going on to. It's, it's very informative. It's also very lively. And it's the kind of website you actually want to go onto the next page and read what is there and find out the information there. This is all new, of course, comparatively new. I mean, big bands of the old days didn't have this kind of backup no. support. Um, mm. You are, must obviously have to give a certain amount of time to doing what you're doing now, publicising the band, telling people yeah. about it, hoping that people are going to ring in and say, look, will you come here and do a performance here? I did say at the start, I'd say yes to everything, which so far um, we've been managing to do. Um, it's basically getting across to people um, everywhere I go, really, cast, quality music, dress up, feel good, creates excitement. Um, even if I'm in a pub, um, which I never do, of course, I, I tend to have everything with me, the briefcase, the CDs, the DVDs. <laughs> yes, that's right. Well, you mentioned there the dressing up and the, the because your band... Per- well, you mentioned there the dressing up and the, the because your band... ...theatre performances, aren't they? You've got people yes. people dressing in, in 40s costumes, a whole group of people around you that, that help to provide the atmosphere. Where did you get them from? 
All sorts of places, really. We've got a 1940s policeman who actually phoned me up and said, did I need a 1940s policeman, which I hadn't thought That's of. That's great. But I took him on, um, Sergeant Brighton, and then we've got Mickey the Fish. Um, Mickey the Fish um, is a kind of spiff character, sells all um, goods that weren't available in the war. And um, we've also got Viv the Spiv. And in dancers, the one thing that um, we are very, very insistent on is, is having everything genuine. So their costumes are completely from the era. Everything they wear is correct. It's not just an outfit, a you know, dress-up or a cheaply made thing. It is actually an actual outfit that was from the 20s, 30s, 40s, whichever we're playing or whatever it's applicable to. Mm -hmm. We've got a good... Um, a sort of Pink Panther character who comes on like Cluso with the magnifying glass as well, just so it gives it a complete stage show, a musical extravaganza, really. Pink Panther and its enthusiastic reception. You're listening to Anne Hopper on the Sunday afternoon on BBC Radio Cumbria. And when I first chatted with Debbie, not long after she took over the band from her father, she was concentrating on working in London theatres and nearby venues, and I wondered how far afield the band's working now, 18 months on. All over the place, really. We've got um, things in Cornwall, and we've got some gigs lined up in Guernsey, and we're just in talks at the moment over Norway, which could be quite good. Tremendous. Um, salmon and fir trees, I think. Yes, indeed. Well, <laughs> why not? Why not? But I do hope there might be an opportunity for you to come a bit further north than you've been able to up to now, because there is a huge audience for big band music up here, and we don't get that many. No. Yes, if there's anywhere up there, we would definitely do it, if anybody knows of anywhere, without a doubt. It is, it is a case of getting right across the country to as many people as we can. As you said when yeah. we spoke last time, um, when you said you were trying to attract younger people to the big band concert, you felt and your musicians feel that the music is timeless and it shouldn't be thought of as music from the past. No. How are you managing to convert people to that point of view? With the CDs and the DVD, uh, the, the sound quality is quite good, so it stands up next to what you would call a modern track of today's music, you know. Mm -hmm. um, whereas a lot of the old recordings, and some absolutely brilliant arrangements, but to young people who aren't familiar with big band music, when you stand them next to it, the actual quality of the recordings don't, sta you know, don't stand up to the taste test mm. of time, really. This is because so, technology has, has moved on yeah, tremendously, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, we're not yeah. recording on the wax discs and things, so the drums now and the bass you can really hammer out, which is what younger people are used to actually hearing. That's working very well. And letting people know it's out there, universities and things, um, which is where we are doing well. Um, we gave loads of T-shirts out, and they come along screaming, waving the T-shirts and things, which is brilliant. You know, that means we're getting a real cross-section of people. Absolutely brilliant. They used to do it for Sinatra in the 40s. Why can't they do it for you in the 21st century? Putting the big backing band is just a little misconduct. Absolutely. <laughs> that sounds tremendous. Well, Debbie, thanks very much indeed for chatting. I, I, I said I would try and catch up with you in a little while, and I've been watching your progress. And Thank you, you very much. You've certainly been doing well. I'd like to round off with a favourite of yours. Have you got a favourite track at the moment? I would say Autumn Leaves, um, mainly because it was my parents' song, and it's one of the ones I think we play slightly, one of the best ones on the CD, actually. Debbie Curtis, Radio Big Band, with Johnny Mercer's adaptation of an old French song into Autumn Leaves. Well, as you've heard from other tracks I've played in the show this afternoon, Debbie not only writes the musical parts, hires the musician, is the band's musical director, a soloist, but the band's vocalist as well. And I don't know about you, but I think it's great that those hopes and dreams of 18 months ago seem to be working out. And a lot of that is due to the energies and the drive of the band's leader. Compromise and failure don't seem to be part of her vocabulary. I hope we'll hear more from the Debbie Curtis Radio Big Band. It plays music from the 1940s right up to the present day, and the band's motto is, whatever you want, 
we can play it. A reminder that Debbie's website can be found here, www.debbiecurtis.co.uk. Well worth a look.